William Afton has been presented in many different ways within the Five Nights at Freddy's series. A shadow murderer, a green-eared monster, a heartless vampire, a demonic inventor, a cursed magician. And while I could dissect how each of these affected our perception of the character this story revolves around, I want to focus on one in particular that has always stood out in my mind. A ventriloquist. A puppeteer. A father carrying his son in the most twisted form. If you're unaware, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator features rare screens showing the animatronics in the back alley of the pizza place. But on Lefty's screen, you can find this poster. Theorists understandably believe this represents the Afton family. A bear with sharp teeth, wearing a party hat, represents the crying child from the Bite of 83. The clown represents his sister, Elizabeth, who was killed by and ended up possessing Circus Baby. The man in a purple suit represents the father, William Afton, as he is controlling his puppet that also wears a purple suit and looks exactly like him. This, of course, represents the older brother Michael, a literal purple man who is said to be easily mistaken for his father. But this is a really interesting image to me because it doesn't seem too evil at first. But when you look into it and what it truly portrays, it's dark. He has Michael on strings. He's pulling the boy along through so much pain and agony. He's demanding and manipulative. He has control. And today I want to talk about how this connects to and in a way foreshadowed events in the modern day FNAF series. That's right, we're talking about Glitchtrap, the true manipulator of this whole ordeal. We're going to be talking about why I personally love the concept of Glitchtrap, but also why I think he could have been so much more threatening and scary. I absolutely want to see more of Glitchtrap in the Ruin DLC, but first I need to elaborate on why. Today, we're talking about the Glitchtrap virus, FNAF's Shadow Ventriloquist. Let's take this from the beginning. Who is Glitchtrap? What exactly is he? And why does he exist? Glitchtrap is a character that first appeared in FNAF VR Help Wanted, and while the only other place we really see him is hidden in the Freddy and Friends on Tour glitches, more on that later, it is implied he is also present in FNAF AR Special Delivery, Security Breach, and even the Fazbear Frights and Tales from the Pizzaplex series. Glitchtrap is probably best described as a digital reincarnation of William Afton. In The Man in Room 1280, we learn that all of Afton's agony from his ultimate custom night nightmare is poured into other objects, allowing him to continue to thrive in different forms. One of these objects was a circuit board which Stephen Wilson scanned into the Fazbear Entertainment System. So, TLDR, William's consciousness was scanned into the in-universe VR experience, and he takes the form of Glitchtrap. Cool. And I've got two of these little coins. OH GOD! WHAT THE HELL?! He actually only fully materialises into this form when you, the player, collect all 16 hidden glitchy tapes like the tape girl tells you to do. But after inspecting some of the files, it seems that it's attached itself to these logs. My logs. That can't be an accident. So now I have to make a choice. Do I leave these logs here for you to find? Or do I try to purge this thing myself by destroying the logs? I've chosen the latter. What we learn is that she slowly becomes extremely deceptive, and that's why we fall for the trap. There is a way to kill it. It wants to escape. To escape through someone. Someone plugged into this game. That's you now. You have to let it begin the process of leaving through you. Then use the disconnect switch that I've embedded by the main stage. Let it approach you. Let it begin to merge with you. It turns out that Glitchtrap had taken over her mind already and was speaking to us through her voice. This is the shadow ventriloquist that I'm talking about. He's behind the scenes, but he's there. The tape girl talks about the playtester of the VR experience named Jeremy. During the playtesting, he would end up using a paper guillotine to cut off his face, clearly stopping the magnetism of Glitchtrap's control. Have you ever heard of a guillotine paper slicer? I didn't even know we had one in the supply room. Jeremy used to do design work. I guess that's how he knew it was there. I came in early that morning. 
No one else was there. At least that's what I thought. I didn't even notice Jeremy standing in the testing room as I walked past. The supply room was so bright. Jeremy complained of nightmares when he came in this morning. He spent an hour talking in Dale's office, but it didn't look like he was given much sympathy. When he came out, he went directly back to the testing room. He doesn't even jump anymore. Nothing scares him. He just stands there like he's talking to someone. There was something that looked like a Halloween mask laying on the floor. I didn't understand. Ink must have spilled. When we go to play the game, no matter what, you get a bad ending. Glitchtrap either way will take control of your mind and use your body to return to the physical world. Because when you think about it, that is his motivation in all of this. He wants to build some sort of army or cult that will help to rebuild him. And that is what we see as the burn trap form in Security Breach. However, if you've seen some of my recent videos, you may be aware that I am not exactly fond of these outcomes in the story. Having yet another physical form of William Afton kind of just makes the past events of the series irrelevant. The fires were pointless. Vanny is now just there. And of course, it strolls past so much potential that Glitchtrap could have had. In my opinion at least, this indefinitely smiling virus suit containing the consciousness of William Afton is a lot more scary of a concept than just Springtrap but burnt again, I guess. I actually think a big problem with Security Breach is that it doesn't know what it is. It doesn't feel at all like a horror game, and so the things that look somewhat familiar to the original FNAF games feel out of place and overdone. Springtrap was such a cool villain in FNAF 3, then in Pizzeria Simulator he was just the same as all of the other animatronics, then in Security Breach he just stands there in the least threatening manner, a hundred miles from your location. In fact, the other day it was the 8th anniversary of FNAF 3 and I got a comment on my community post from somebody saying that Springtrap was so threatening in FNAF 3 because he was the only one that could kill you. And they're right. Springtrap is always the center of your attention in that game. If you look at the other games, Afton is a threat in, he's overshadowed by the rest of the game. Except in Help Wanted, where Glitchtrap is always slowly creeping up behind you. It's a terrifying sight. So what would I want instead of Burn Trap? It's hard to say really, but what I'm currently thinking is something like Omega Flowey and Undertale. Multiple screens with Glitchtrap's face staring down on you from above while you have to take out his life support or something, I don't know. <laughs> but seriously, wouldn't that just be such a cool fight? We are aware that Glitchtrap is in control of Vanessa and others, but the only time we really see Glitchtrap in Security Breach is in Princess Quest, and this is a little underwhelming. I don't even know if you can call this Glitchtrap. I don't know, there's just so many cool ideas that could be done. Make this purple monster ooze out of the machine, have it slowly infect the animatronics, put Glitchtrap shadows in the animatronic eyes every now and then as a spooky easter egg. This character is undeniably unsettling, but my favourite place he's been has got to be Freddy and Friends. Freddy and Friends on Tour was a fake TV show that was uploaded to the Steel Wool Studios YouTube channel starting on the 8th of September 2021. There were four episodes in total with one uploaded every other week, and it acted as a series of teasers for Security Breach before its release. Each episode had secret glitched frames, showing characters, an ending teaser that would show an animation of another character, and it would give another digit to the release date. Additionally, there were strange codes in the glitches that we eventually discovered was a cipher for solving the wall code in the sister location room. Diver, diver, let's go. And while the first three episodes were structured exactly the same, the fourth episode was the most glitchy and finally showed a truce between the four characters. This time, hidden within the glitches was something a lot more menacing with a lot more meaning. I'll let my past self elucidate. No, no, you're fine. Wait. Let's try and pause on it. Up. 
It's fast. It's still one frame. Even yeah, it's one down. frame. Oh my god! You what? good? What's up? What's and I think up? I know what you're thinking of. Right, okay, so basically, you know how we have the Vanessa glitch? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so we have that glitch, and that's very clear. And then we have all of these other random purple glitches, and everyone thought it was purple guy last time, right? Let me yeah, let me let me exactly let me show doing. you this photo. Oh no! Wait. This is like the most jam packed. <laughs> I'm glad we could all be. <gasps> oh! oh, that is cool. It's glitch trap. Wait, and this is every that's episode. That's absolute. That's absolute. No, no, no. It's it's this episode. It's all in this episode, no. and I don't see it. It's a puzzle. It's all it's all in this episode and it's the yellow bits. I said there was purple and yellow. Oh my god. That's right. There were 20 frames in the last episode that had purple and yellow glitches. If you put the pieces back together, the iconic line from the series that also relates to Glitchtrap in Help Wanted, you get this image of Glitchtrap, which might have to be one of the coolest easter eggs this series has ever seen. As I said, it's menacing and it has a lot more meaning. The descriptions for these videos say that these are episodes of the show that were found buried in the Fazbear Entertainment archives for our enjoyment. Clearly from the aesthetic and the lore of FNAF, this show was from the 1980s, probably replacing Fredbear and Friends after Fredbear's was closed for good. In fact, in the story B7 we see Billy watch a show just titled Freddy and Friends, which corrupts his mind into thinking that he is a robot. Maybe we will learn more about this in the upcoming sequel story. Clearly, during the retrieval process of this show, Glitchtrap had gotten into the system, and that is why we see his face here. FNAF AR told us that he was in the main Fazbear Entertainment system, and in Security Breach we are aware he's got control of the animatronics, including the staff bots. Really, Glitchtrap is a force in Security Breach that is making everything happen, but we don't see him. I guess that's true to William Afton's character, always lurking in the shadows but I personally don't see it as a positive thing. I don't know, perhaps some of you will disagree in the comments and that's completely fair. The one thing I do know is that Freddy and Friends on Tour was the perfect teaser series for Security Breach and the Glitchtrap Easter Egg will forever live in my mind rent free. And I guess if it's able to do that, it perfectly captures the intention of Glitchtrap's character. Princess Quest is actually pretty good at getting across its message, but I really want to make a whole video on that, so you can expect that one to come soon. I've talked about how Glitchtrap is always a behind the scenes character, and that is completely fine to me if it's done correctly. I think my problem with it in Security Breach is that there's almost zero indication of Glitchtrap's possession. Sure, there's the Endo poster signalling that this is the case, there's the whole Princess Quest ending, but unless I'm forgetting things, that's pretty much it. I would have loved to see some creepy indication that this is all just a puppet show performed by a reincarnated killer. And looking at the poster for the Ruined DLC, I have a lot of hope. Seeing more of the digital world and how it interacts with reality is a really interesting concept that I think fits perfectly in the series. But if you don't know what I mean by this shadow virus idea, let me direct your attention to the 11th Fazbear Frights book, Prankster. You guessed it guys, the prankster in this story is none other than Glitchtrap himself. Originally, my problem with this story was that there was nothing to say it was him. You can make a good guess based on contextual clues, but it wasn't fully confirmed until the release of the Ultimate Guide. Prankster is essentially a spin on the original story of Help Wanted. It's about a guy named Jeremiah who is mistakenly named Jeremy on his birthday cake that works for a game development company that was brought out by Fazbear Entertainment. The thing about this story is that it's all a huge red herring. His colleague Parker played pranks on him all the time, but then the pranks go a step too far, involving severed fingers, eyeballs, and fresh intestines. In the end, Jeremiah views a VCR tape recording from Parker and his love interest, but they look nervous, like they've been abducted. And finally, to end off the shorter story in the series, the closet behind Jeremiah opens. Are you unsatisfied? I was too. The story sets up Parker as the antagonist, but then directly shows that it cannot be Parker. It gives no more clarification. No sign of Glitchtrap or rabbits, and no indication of what's in the closet. I quickly wrote this off as one of the worst stories in the series, and while it's not the best, 
I've come to accept that this last segment is creepy. Two people staring into a camera, being forced to say things they don't want to say, and knowing that they are destined to be mangled up in that closet is terrifying. So over time, I've actually grown to like this story. I think it's actually a really great use of glitch trappers, this prankster, a shadow ventriloquist, because even though he doesn't show up at all, it is all implied through subtle but strong connections. The way Tape Girl speaks across tapes changes over time, and this is such a good way to show this possession. Although we kind of saw Vanessa's first hand, I think there were better ways to do it. Yes, I hear you. I know. No. There's no miscommunication. I understand. Yes, I have it. I made it myself. I think you would like it. I'll be ready. And I won't let you down. It will be fun. Really, what I'm trying to say here is that there needs to be a balance, and this goes for the entirety of the FNAF series too. There have to be clues that lead to an answer, but they are more effective if they aren't blatantly obvious. It also all goes back to show don't tell. The difference between Jeremy and Tape Girl is that we were told about Glitchtrap's attempt at invading Jeremy, while we were shown Tape Girl's possession very subtly through changes in the way she spoke. And this to me creates a pretty big differentiation, Sure, law given through emails is okay, but there's always better ways to present a story. Glitchtrap can be in the background, that's completely fine, but show us in an engaging yet subtle way, and you'll have everyone hooked. Now, here's a spoiler warning for this section. The Bobby Dots conclusion was released the other day, and if you haven't read it yet, you might want to save this for later. You've been warned. Okay, so Glitchtrap is really cool. When you think about it, he appears in two out of three of the stories in the latest book. Let's talk about the storyteller really quickly, because this is actually a story that directly shows how Glitchtrap got into the Pizzaplex systems. <laughs> In this story, we are able to see interactions between the board of directors of Fazbear Entertainment, who make a decision to put a tree in the middle of the Pizzaplex atrium with a supposed storyteller inside that is programmed by artificial intelligence. The catch is that nobody knows who the storyteller inside the tree is. But of course, we find out that it is a white tiger animatronic with a white jacket, one blue eye and one green eye. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the animatronic from the Tales from the Pizzaplex 7 cover, Tiger Rock, and it gets better. This tree in the atrium has electrical roots that stem all across the Pizzaplex, giving access to the systems, arcade machines, and the animatronics. It turns out that when the storyteller is being utilized, the animatronic's personalities are amplified because of a program called Mimic 1. If you've been reading the epilogues, you'd know that is likely what the strange endoskeleton killer robot thing is. So, it is all tied together, but more importantly, this is huge in terms of Glitchtrap lore. The question now is why was Glitchtrap in the Tiger Rock animatronic head? I think we might actually find out in that book, because that story is actually about a virtual reality game coming to life. This is perfect. Everything I ever wanted to read in this story. It gives confirmation on and explanations behind Glitchtrap being in control of everything in Security Breach. He's omnipresent. He's a really powerful force that I feel gets underutilized in the games themselves. I'm all for books explaining important elements in the games, but I know for a fact that Security Breach did not hit its maximum potential in that sense. And that's a great transition to the first story in this book. GGY, where Gregory is confirmed to be Patient 46. I will be making a video on that soon, I promise. At the moment, you just have to trust me and everyone else that's saying the same thing. Do I like that Gregory is Patient 46? Not really. But what I do love is the implications of that, and the subtle nods to Glitchtrap are impeccable in this story. The reveal at the end is that the person who was killing the therapists was Tony's friend Greg, who always went by the nickname of Dr. Rabbit. 
and at some point, he has some strange dialogue about him being the sorcerer's favourite apprentice. If you haven't worked it out yet, this is of course referring to William Afton as Glitchtrap, and now we can add another profession to the roster. Afton is a sorcerer, just like in Security Breach, where we see him presented as a magician staff bot. He has these weird unexplained powers. I find it really menacing though, that the book directly calls out that Gregory is Afton's favourite apprentice. Why not Vanessa? What about Tape Girl? Maybe it's because Gregory has one thing that differentiates himself from the others. He's a child. <laughs> that gave me the chills. Okay, look, if you want to hear me talk more about my theories and opinions on all of that, then stay tuned for an upcoming video where I want to talk about GGY in more depth. To conclude, Glitchtrap is a character with a whole lot of potential in this franchise. I'm still kind of upset that it overall led to just Afton coming back in a physical form, but the books look like they are doing him justice at least. Along with Nightmarion and Mangle, Glitchtrap is a character that I am hoping and praying will appear more in the Ruined DLC. Something simple like the creepy glitched face hidden in the Freddy and Friends on Tour series, more glitched minigames that could erode into the virus, or just more interactions with him in general. He's genuinely a creepy character because unlike most of the characters in this series, this one is very clearly a human in a suit, but at the same time, you can probably take off his mask and find a faceless monster inside. At the same time, he is not a physical being, no matter how three-dimensional he looks. So I adore the concept of Glitchtrap, but generally dislike the execution, I think is what I'm trying to say. Don't worry, I won't let it get to my head. Badumch.